Hi everyone, in this lecture we're going to build links in our Jinja templates. So the focus of this lecture is uh, that I'm going to provide a next question button, a button that when the user clicks, the user is going to go to the next question. So there is actually uh, nothing that we are going to do within this lecture. So there is actually something that is very little, but we are going to do that later. And most of our code is going to be contained to our HTML. So uh, we are working in the quiz. So whenever I say I want to provide the next button, it is not going to be in the home page, right? Because in the home page, we have all the questions and you remember, right, we have all the questions. There is no next button. There is, however, an add question button, which we are going to add later. But whenever I'm talking about the next question, it means that we are in our quiz HTML, uh, the uh, HTML file for quiz, and there we are going to add that button. So at the end of this content, right after that, I'm going to say, uh, I'm not going to, I'm going to say home, uh, I'm, I, I am going to provide a home button and I'm going to provide a next question button. Now, before adding the next question button, I'm going to add an anchor element that is going to redirect the user to the, um, to the home for our URL. Now, there is a method that we are going to use in this lecture and that method is going to allow us to create links or to build links in our um, uh, templates in our Jinja templates dynamically what do I mean by that so I'm, I'm going to leave that at that point and I'm just going to provide a space here and I'm going to come to the next question so I, I just changed my mind I'm going to do it for the next question first so in here, what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to grab um, the uh, an anchor element and within that, so whenever the user clicks the next question button, so let's provide next question. Let's save that. Let's run it. So you can see we have that next question. So when the user clicks it, what is actually happening in, these, in the database level, in the model level? What happens is if the user is here, the user is going to go immediately to another question for which an index is higher than the previous question. So, so if it is the first question, the index is zero. When the user is going to the next question, it means it is zero plus one or index plus one. So the previous question is going to have one index lower than the next question or the next question's index is going to be one higher than the previous question. That is the idea that we are going to um, employ in our href. So what is the URL that we want to go to? It is, it is right here. We just created that. So I'm just going to grab this URL so you know where it is coming from. Now, the index, if I just provide it integer and with a type of index, that is not something that the HTML is going to recognize or run. But what I am going to provide, the reason that we are not doing that is because that is the job of the Avda route decorator. The integer index, this is going to handle that. We shouldn't worry about it. The only thing the user has to provide is just click. So when the user clicks, I want to grab the current index, for example, it is zero in this case, and I want to add one to it. Why one? Because the next index is going to be one higher than the previous index, than the index of the question currently showing. But this is not valid HTML, nor Jinja. So we need to provide it as a Jinja variable. Very good. There we go. So we have index plus one. So let's save this. We have index plus one. Currently, this is not going to work. So if I click on it, you're going to see that we have a Jinja exception, undefined error. So we have a Jinja exception. So I'm going to come back. I'm going to go to, let's say, question with an index of two, which is question number three. Now, this is going to throw an error, right? We need to make sure that it works. Now, we have grabbed, we have created an index variable. 
but we have not actually defined that index variable within our view function. So we need to go back to our view function and we need to define it. So I'm just going to rearrange this code a little bit. So it's understandable. There we go. And in here, this index, this, keep that in mind, this index, the first, um, the key in this keyword argument, this refers to our Jinja variable, this, this one that we have here. So I'm going to set the Jinja variable equal to the integer index that we have been providing here, equal to the index. And I'm going to save that restarting the server there we go i'm just going to reload this and so i'm just going to go to the first question which has an index of zero so again when the user clicks on the next question what actually happens is we go to a question which has a higher index than the one which was previously shown so if the previous uh, question which is currently showing has an index of zero what is the next question has it's going to have an index of one so zero plus one that's why we said index plus one why didn't we say zero plus one because in that case we would have hard coded this index because the user will never will not always like start with the index of zero so if you just say zero plus one the user has to be on the question which is which has an index of zero and the only thing that the user can do is just go to the next question that's it but what if the user is on question number one uh, the, on question number three or four questions which have an index of one two three in that case that url will not exist and we will end up with an error again another error so the reason that we provide an index is we just want to make it dynamic so whatever the current index is add one to it then that would mean that we are in the next question very simple so what is the most common training command let's take a look at that here it is oh this is the one so what is the next question let's click and there we go highly developed sense here we go so this is what we have done here now there is a problem with this code let's say in the future you decide that you change your URL inside your app, the route decorator. Let's say you want to change that in the future. You come up with a way, okay, like you say, okay, this questions, it doesn't make so much sense. So when you change that, you forgot, you, you somehow forget to change it in the HTML as well. Then you're going to, you're going to be, you're going to end up with an error. So what you want to do is you want to make sure that this process is seamless. This process happens in this way that whenever you change the URL here, it is automatically changed in here as well. So, I mean, that is cool, right? So, for that, we are going to use URL4. That is the main focus of this lecture, to use the URL4 function. So, I'm just going to provide a Jinja variable. So, I'm just going to remove this part. I'm going to create a Jinja variable we have a url url underscore for method or function which is available to us by your by the jinja templating engine so in here the first argument is always going to be the view function for the url that you're trying to access so we want to access this url what is the view function relating to this uh, url it is questions view so let's copy that Keep in mind, you do not copy the welcome, you just copy the questions. Because relating to this URL is this view function, not this view function. So I'm just going to say, grab the view function relating to whichever URL it is that you're trying to access. Like, very short, very simple. So put that here. That is going to be the first parameter or argument and what is the second one it's basically going to be a keyword argument so we are going to specify index now index in this case it's a Jinja variable so we are going to grab that and we are going to add one to it we have done this so let's save that let's save this as well so it's basically grabbing and detecting changes let's uh, reload the page and now when I click we should go to the question which has an index of what three so our code still works that's a good thing 
Now, the reason that I didn't do the home button was I just wanted to do directly through this URL 4. So within this, again, you use URL 4 to map the URL that you're trying to access, not to its URL, not to the URL itself, but to the view function representing that URL. Because in the future, you might come into your Flask application and change that URL. Then you're going to end up with an error. But in this case, it doesn't matter what the URL is. It is always going to refer to the view function re uh, relating to that, that URL. So I'm going to create a Jinja variable. URL for perfect. I'm sure you are truly understanding what I'm saying. That's like I'm feeling it right now. So I'm going to pass in what is home button, right? What is the URL that I'm trying to access when I'm talking about home? It is the slash, right? It's like the root URL. What is the view function associated with it? It is the welcome. So let's grab the welcome, put it right here. Let's save that. Let's run this. I mean, let's run this again. So everything is crystal clear. Oh, the reason that it is not showing is this HTML element doesn't have any content. It is there, but it is shrunk to zero. So let's save that. Let's run this. So we have our home. So if I click on the home, we are going to go to our home. So congratulations, you have just created a multi-page full stack application. But we are going to take this application and we are going to make it like a very, very fantastic one by the end of this section. So, so far we have covered a lot. I mean, a lot of cool stuff. The only thing that I would like to show you at the end of this lecture is just the a developer tool. Just take a look at the body. So we can see that we are uh, dealing with HTML elements uh, and I think it was the HTML introduction. It was the first chapter of the HTML5 Essentials course. In the first videos, I'm not really sure which video that was. I'm not even going to try to remember. But in one of those videos, introductory videos, I told you that you can generate HTML with a lot of other engines, with a lot of other engines. But always keep in mind that at the end of the day, you're always going to end up with HTML elements. And that is, this is the proof of what I've just said and what I've told you before. Like a lot of lectures back, like, like uh, a thousand years ago. <laughs> so I told you that whenever you create HTML, you write it inside an HTML element, it is always going to be HTML. If you create it using Jinja, it is always going to be HTML again, because that is what the browser understands. You, it, it cannot be anything else. You can generate HTML through like a thousand engines, but at the end of the day, you're going to end up with HTML elements. Let's uh, go to our uh, questions. And there we go. So if, we, if I come here, you can see that I don't see any Jinja variables. What do I see? I see slash questions slash one. I see the beautiful URL that I've crafted there. And this entire thing, this entire thing which we wrote in here, it basically represents an empty slash. There we go. Basically an empty slash, a single slash. So we have this. So if I click on the next question, you can see the next question. It has an index. So you can see it is dynamic. This is what I've been talking about. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then we are going to see not found. And it is going to be within an H1. The paragraph is going to say provide you with more information. So let's go back. There we go. So with this, our lecture comes to an end. See you in the next one.